uh, we begin the next session. And uh, it's a very interesting presentation. In fact, I'm actually looking forward to this. It is a case study by uh, uh, the head of digital experience and innovation for one of the most, let me put it this way, it's a very innovative institution and they're doing a lot of cool stuff in uh, Saudi Arabia. They're based out in Jeddah, uh, King Abdullah University for Science and Technology, KAUST, that is, uh, it's the, uh, the, uh, the, the, in short, they're, they're called KAUST. And Muhammad Abdullah, the head of digital experience and innovation, he will be talking about KAUST Digital and within that scope, of his uh, of his presentation, he now that we are in a post COVID era, which has just started, his topic means a lot to universities, to the schools, and to institutions that uh, do provide learning. Uh, it's all about transforming the campus life. Uh, I have definitely gone to a university, and I'm quite kind of used to the in person. Uh, experience. I know what a campus looks like, but now things are very much different. So, Muhammad, uh, the floor is set. It's all yours. You may share your screen, and I am looking forward to what will be an amazing presentation from your side. Over to you, sir. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for having me here. I, I have to say, first of all, uh, thanks for the organizers for being creative and finding ways to conduct uh, this interesting event uh, online. I know we were all hoping to be in person and meet you in person, but unfortunately, this is the case. Uh, I'm going to try to be brief. I, I got about 15 to 20 minutes, and I want to share with you what's happening at KAUST. And uh, let me begin by sharing my screen here. All right, I hope you can all see my screen. Uh, yes, I'm, obviously, yeah. I'm used to speaking to audience and unfortunately I'm speaking to a, a monitor in my office. So it's gonna be a little bit different than we're used to. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through what is happening at higher education from the CAUS perspective and a little bit of, of how we're trying to also uh, take advantage of, of COVID-19 and, and embrace new ways of thinking and being innovative. It's a challenging time for everybody. And uh, I, by no means we've got it right. So this is one way of trying to do things in this challenging times. So my presentation is, is our view of what we're doing by no means is perfect. Uh, so let me begin by telling you a little bit of KAUST. I assume a lot of you know it, but I'll, I'll just be on the cautious side. But by, I titled my presentation today a little bit differently. I, I decided to choose the, you know, the title of the role of a living lab in embracing innovation. And by living lab, you'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, what is a living lab, right? From our perspective, it's a place uh, or an environment that allows experimentation, trying things out, failing at it as well. But we don't think we wanna do it alone. We wanna engage with our partner ecosystem, industry, government, uh, other players as well. And keeping a focus on what matters the most, which is the user or the customer. For us, it's the user. We're not a we're not a profit company, uh, so a user is 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 more meaningful for education or a student or a staff or a, or a faculty. And at the end of the day, it's also about mindset and culture because that's a really important part in this living lab environment. So we think of it as a combination of people, place, systems, and values that embraces all the things that I mentioned above. Now, how does that fit with, uh, you know, with COVID and higher education? Believe me, it does, because without having this ability to pivot and try things out, uh, COVID would become catastrophic for many organizations. And again, this is one way of trying to address the challenging uh, times of COVID, but also challenging economics and anything else that could come in the future as well. Briefly, KAUST is on the west coast of Saudi Arabia. We are in the Red Sea. We have a beautiful view of, of the Red Sea and a, an environment that just, you know, tells you, it, it makes you creative. Uh, so we're north of Jeddah, closer to Rabagh, but we're 100 kilometers from the airport of Jeddah. And you, we, you might think of KAUST as a university, but the truth is it's also a city. We are a complete living city. Uh, a society that has patterns of people coming, living, and studying. So, for example, 
the area here is the campus buildings. This is the academic area where teaching and research takes place. This is a, a neighboring area that allows students to live in close proximity to the campus. So it has some retail options, a living quarters for the students, but also kind of a small vibrant way of, of making, making a living space meaningful for student population. But then we have a complete city of uh, residential, recreational, roads, uh, fire department, police, that allows us all to live in one society, one enclosed city. We also have an area for industry partnership and research uh, partners as well, and innovation and startups. Uh, so a complete full-fledged city. So we, when we think of Cal, we think of it in two ways, academic and research, but also as a, as a city that allows us to take advantage of that uh, close proximity and enclosed community that we have. So with that in mind, and this is the innovation. So with that in mind, just some key statistics and numbers, just to give you an idea. The number you want to pay attention to is, is down here, 7,000 plus community members. This is a total living population of the city, uh, but it does go higher during the day. So it actually gets closer to even 10, 12,000 people during the day with workers and labor coming in. So uh, we also have about 1,000 students or so, a good percentage of female population in a, in a scientific uh, you know, university is actually a very good number to have 37%. And we also have interesting population of school children. This is K to 12 school children, which allows us to become even more creative in what we do because the fact that we have high school kids in our community also brings in a different mindset and a view of how to solve problems and challenges. So high schoolers play a big role in what we do and you'll see it in a minute here. And also the diversity is very interesting. We are about 112, even a little bit more now nationalities. So you get a very different uh, perspective of cultures and values and allows us to think differently as well. Now, from a CAOS perspective at a very high level, uh, CAOS focuses on, on four domains, water, food, energy, and environment. Uh, most recently, our president introduced a fifth dimension, which is about digital. And you can see why digital plays a big role in all of these things. Uh, but the challenges are all about what matters to the kingdom, what matters to the region, and also what matters to the world. And we have a lot of resources, I'll skip those for now. <clears throat> so let me zoom in a little bit more. We launched a, a program called CalSmart. Think of CalSmart as a digital education research, but also smart city uh, transformational program that allows us to think differently and think out of the box. This is about the living lab that I mentioned in the beginning and how to become experimental. Uh, so we think of the campus as a unique opportunity. Because we've been living, uh, and, and this uh, campus has been here for about 12 years now, we've established patterns of life, patterns of society, people waking up, people going to work, people coming back, eating, dining, uh, you know, studying in school. So we've established all these patterns and we wanna take advantage of this opportunity to, again, facilitate more experimentation with a digital, you know, focus on the future as well. Now, we decided that this digital transformation should not be based on technology. We, did, we didn't want to begin with technology, right? It's, it's not about building capabilities and technology. It's really more about experiences. So we're using the word experiences and we're defining most of what we do around a set of concrete seven or so experiences uh, that allow this smart city living to, to, to manifest itself. So let me begin. Dining experience. How do you eat? How do you, how do you retail? How do you order? How, how do you receive food? And again, you can see how COVID is also changing these things now. Visitors coming to Kaust, what, what happens when you arrive? Where do you stay? How do you find your way? Uh, and again, if you're going to stay for a couple of days, where would you eat, right? So you go back to the dining as, as well. And then employee experience, an important topic of as, as an employee, how do I interact with the world I, I am, right? How do I come to Kaos and, and get hired? How do I leave Kaos when I'm done? Uh, who, what's my identity, right? And again, how do I deal with systems and tools? Conference room and meeting. We introduced this before COVID and it became even more relevant with during COVID, right? How do, you, how do I meet with people? How do I join sessions? How do I... 
uh, find a conference room, which doesn't happen more now, but how do I join a Zoom call as well? Uh, mobility and transportation, right? Taxi, driving, busing, uh, finding uh, your way inside Kaos if you're on a taxi as well. Events, students, a very education relevant experience. How do students interact? How do they um, find their courses? How do they register for their courses? But also how do they even live in the city of Kaos as well? which brings me to a broader living at Kaos experience, which entails a lot more things to do with health, recreation. Uh, again, you go back to shopping and dining, but also your home at Kaos. How, how does a smart home play a role in this digital transformation? And you'll see more about that in a second. So as a living lab, an experimental body, if you want to encourage digital you know, transformation, we think of engaging everybody at Kaos. And this is the advantage that we have is we want to engage everybody. This is not a technology play. This is not an IT play as well. This is a community play. How to take advantage of everybody you have in this environment, school children included, to become creative contributors to experimentation. So we announce things publicly. We tend to go and put things broadly, ask people to sign up, ask them to join the journey, and we don't qualify them, right? This is not about finding the smartest uh, technology savvy programmer. This is about finding people's interest. So example, we put out these things, we announce them in, in screens and announcements, you know, come join us, redefine a hotel experience at Kaust. Yes, we have a hotel at Kaust. Come talk about AI, uh, come talk about mobile applications, Ta come talk about uh, delivery options and onboarding employees and other other things. And again, we end up with a very diverse mix, some technical, some business oriented, some marketing oriented, but some with an opinion, just simply a pain or a need that they have. And uh, while we're doing this kind of stuff, I mentioned technologies in the background, we know there's some fundamentals needed. So we don't ignore technology. We just do it a little bit more in the background. We know that wayfinding is important, a system of tools, uh, we know that 5G is also important. We know that LoRa coverage of a smart city is important. Digital twin, digital wallets, identity. So we have all these things in place. There's many, many more, by the way. I'm just giving you a small teaser. So this happens in the background because there are fundamentals and they are needed. Now, speaking of mobile applications, just one example is we, we realized early that when we talk experiences, the ones I mentioned earlier, they need to come to the hands of a user. So we identified mobile app as a, as a critical kind of a component of this. So again, we, we, we have a mobile app strategy, we bring things to a mobile application, we apply some re, you know tools and I'll skip that because I'm gonna talk about it in the next slide. And then we end up with design sprints. You're familiar with squad tribe models, a little bit of that, even though we haven't figured this out yet, clearly we're still working on this. And the IT supports the environment as well and the development and the migration and everything that we know about IT. So uh, while I pause here, let me actually talk a little bit about this top area here. So this process begins by an idea. We begin by taking people's feedback on something that they think should be done differently. You now it could be an improvement, it could be trans revolutionary, it could be transformational. Our ideas are welcome. We take them and we start to inspire people and get them to do some design thinking techniques. We apply design, design thinking as, as a technique that we do it all the time. Design thinking is really understanding the perspective of the users and the empathy of what, where they're coming from, not necessarily by a technological requirement uh, and the, the usual typical cycle of, of digitally building something. No, we actually begin with the user in mind and then take it forward. Now, we also began doing some kind of a hackathon, rapid prototyping, producing, you know, you can call it MVP, you can call it a, a prototype, some sort of a very small, low fidelity ideas that come first. And once that prototype is there, we begin getting feedback on it and getting a, re, a reiterative cycle of improvement as well. Eventually, we could go to a rollout. Eventually, we could say, this is something we wanna deploy. This is where the budgeting comes in for bigger money. This is where you start to involve operational units of your departments, your functions. You, you don't involve them late, you involve them early from the beginning, but 
this is where they start to take more ownership on rolling out something that has been tested and examined and, and again, experimented with, even though it might fail and it may never come to the stage, but that's the advantage of being a living lab, especially in education and in COVID times is to allow this rapid experimentation quickly rather than big bulky, let's say projects that are sometimes needed for certain purposes, but sometimes you want to be a little bit more nimble and quicker so you can pivot quickly and experiment quickly. Now we do all that and we like to market it and talk about it, build awareness, build interest, build excitement, and even talk about things that didn't work out. So if things fail, we actually want to talk about that as well. Now for the sake of time, I'm going to maybe uh, conclude with a couple of concrete examples of what's happening. This is only a sample of what we're doing. But I figured it's relevant from a transformational perspective, maybe not much education sector, but from a city perspective, they're very relevant. Autonomous mobility. We decided to examine and look into options of autonomous driving for sustainability, but also for future mobility ideas. So uh, we began an experience. Uh, we wanted to develop a, a platform that allowed us to test autonomous mobility. So we decided that Autonomous shuttles are something we want to examine. We don't want to go buy and deploy autonomous cars. We wanted to understand what that means. So not only do we want it to understand, we also wanted to allow it to make, you know, make it make it part of a smarter experience, allow research ideas with our faculty and students, test how we can operate them, but also maybe even a, a future investment uh, options as well in this in these players. Micro manufacturing is a big deal as well. So we were the first site in Kingdom to launch autonomous shuttles. The pilot began last year. We ended up with two shuttles, two suppliers, and about a month, six months to a year assessment of, of driving autonomous cars in Kingdom. Again, it's, a, it's an assessment, not necessarily a deployment. And by doing that, we learned quite a bit. So for example, you know, just bringing shuttles in the Kingdom logistically is a challenge, right? And we learned how to do that. We understood also what infrastructure is needed to support the charging of them, the routes, the uh, health and safety aspects of it as well. And how do you even train uh, a team on the ground to maintain them and also operate them sometimes as needed? And again, a market activity and launch. This is all done quickly through, again, experimental cycles, not necessarily a big bulky uh, process. Now, what are we doing today? We're beginning to connect these shuttles also with the ecosystem of Kaust, smart traffic lights, bus stops also needs that. Uh, how about mobility in your hand, right? So you want to request these shuttles on demand. So all that stuff again is, is part of the continuous experimentation. We did not begin by trying to do all that and make it into an RFP, right? That's not the process we follow. We began by saying, let's bring a capability in and build things around it incrementally, try it out, fail, succeed, keep going forward. So this is all it's the stuff we're doing on autonomous driving, an interesting experiment. And again, we're not doing it alone. We're actually partnering with the government as well and the uh, other entities in the kingdom because it's all about collaboration. It's not about only cost. Uh, last, because I'm about, maybe I have three or four minutes left, is about smart home. So I mentioned the uh, homes and living at Kaos. So we also began an experiment with our facility management team at Kaos is how do we build a future smart home that allows smartness from a sustainability, energy, living, but also technology, all the stuff combined. Now I don't have the, the let's say the, the real slides because it's still something we're working on. But we basically are building a home today at Kaust. Uh, it's, it's an existing house. We took it, we remodeled it, and it's a smart home of the future. It's going to be not a, not a demo, not a showcase. It's a, actually a living space. We're going to have a family living there, and an experiment will take place about how they feel, how they interact, but also how does the home itself interact with the maintenance teams and departments, and how does it save energy? We're doing creative ideas. And again, some of them are great, they may not work, and we're going to learn that. And that will make itself uh, ready for future homes that we may not put things in the future homes, but we may put things as well. So this is a living space, a smart home within Kaust, 
that is very, very impactful because it just tells us how somebody living in a house uh, in a smart home would interact. So it has a lot of components. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to talk about it, but that's the idea of experimentation. Now, just to conclude and summarize what's happening. Uh, Kaust is a unique campus, a living city and a community. And there's, again, a ma ma major opportunity to take advantage of this laboratory of Kaust as a whole. And the second point is, you know, Cal Smart, the program that we just mentioned here, is an inclusive uh, experience collector. It orchestrates these experiences, but it's really actually done by our community members, uh, not by uh, one team only. This is a collective of everybody contributing to an experimentation at Cal that are uh, community, but also business units and departments at Cal as well. Now, as an open invitation, Anybody on this uh, event summit, reach out if you're, you're welcome, join our lab, be part of it. There's many ways to collaborate and uh, I welcome any questions. I have one question, uh, Muhammad. Please Can do. Can I relocate from Dubai to Kaust? Uh, you're more than welcome to, we'll, we'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely, great. Um, I have another question actually, uh, what's next in the next digital experience, what's next? So next is clearly uh, a continuous process of building that culture and mindset. As for us, it's again, it's not about the technologies, it's not about the experiences, it's about the mindset of people. Now, uh, we're constantly working with our community to get them to understand how we do, and it's been very successful. COVID is a challenge. I think the next immediate thing is, is you know, hopefully putting COVID behind us and moving on with things that, that are more physically requiring people to be at the same proximity. So a lot of things we're doing today is virtual and that's limiting us, but uh, we're taking advantage of that. But the next thing is let's, let's get over that and begin having more you know, events and sessions that are hands-on people coming together. Great, superb, superb. Thank you very much, Mohammed. We'll uh, definitely, I will definitely grab a visa and visit <laughs> Kaust for sure. And we'll be happy to be a, a, a resident of uh, the, the Cal City. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. and yeah. actually, moving forward, I'll have to give you extra time. Your presentation was impressive, to be very honest with you. <laughs>